What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is the Battle of the Midway 1942 told from a Japanese perspective. One out of three. This says one out of three. By the way, this is a 40 minute video. Yeah, so what are the other two? <laughs> and it's one out of three. I think the other two is kind of like jokes. On the World War II thing we saw, they were jumping from island yeah. to island. This is kind of that. Okay. Um, so obviously we checked out the Pearl Harbor attack for the first time the other day. We're four seconds in there. It says, mm -hmm. I'm going to put us back. There we go. But it said for Pearl Harbor on the screen, mm -hmm. didn't it? Um, so this is the next one of kind of like the series, I guess. We really enjoyed the Pearl Harbor one. Yeah, it was good. Really well done. Yeah. Like by the person who did this. They don't have many videos on the channel, but it's super well done. It was done. very interesting. With like the ships with the old mm -hmm. footage and stuff like that. It was mad. So check that out if you haven't seen it. This is going to be a two-part on our channel. Yeah. So you're seeing... 20 minutes of it today, you're going to see 20 minutes of it tomorrow. Um, check out Patreon, we'd really appreciate it. Because we do work out about half five, don't we? We do. And then we're also doing these super long videos. We're streaming tonight, which the stream would have already happened by the time you've seen this. So unfortunately, you've missed it if you, if you didn't get it. But I hope you've enjoyed it. You can watch it on Catch Up. We're going to do a bit of GeoGuessr and stuff like that. But also on Patreon, we do do a monthly giveaway uh, just to give back a little bit. But honestly, it really does help us. So we'd appreciate if you could check that out. Now, the Battle of Midway, I know nothing about this other than the World War II video we saw. Yes, I don't know anything either. Other than that, absolutely nothing. And this is the Japanese perspective. So this is kind of like their battle plans, I guess, going into mm -hmm. it, is what I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Smash that button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Let's check out the Battle of Midway, 1942. What we got? It's been six months since the attack on Pearl Harbor. And so far, the war has been triumphant for the Empire of Japan. They got a lot of they had achieved success. a string of victories across the Pacific and had captured many research-rich territories. However, Japan still found herself in a difficult position. Despite all of their successes, their biggest opponent, the United States, had yet to show any signs of surrendering. This was worrisome. Japan needed to end the war quickly before the U.S., with its mighty industrial strength, ultimately defeated them. Definitely. And six months, that's so a lot Japan of time. So what Japan was yeah. to win a decisive battle one that would demoralize the Americans and finally bring them to the negotiating table. That would never happen. It was considered that America's center of gravity was its Pacific fleet, primarily its carriers. Destroy this and you destroy their will to continue the war. Therefore, the only chance Japan had of winning this war was if the American carrier fleet was destroyed. Okay. Which they failed on the Pearl question Harbor. was yeah. how to provoke the carriers from leaving its safe base at Pearl Harbor. The answer attack an objective the Americans wouldn't relinquish without a fight. Okay. And after much debate, it was decided that Midway would be that objective. So they're antagonizing them again. If the Japanese attacked and invaded Midway, the like, Americans would certainly respond. That seems like such a bad idea, doesn't it? It doesn't sound good. Like, you've had this Pearl Harbor thing, you haven't wiped out the carrier, so they go, oh, let's double down. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's annoy him even more. <laughs> like, oh. In force, and this would finally give the Imperial Japanese Navy a chance to annihilate the American carrier fleet once and for all. Okay. okay. And thus, Operation MI was created with the objective of capturing Midway and destroying the Pacific Fleet. Mm -hmm. The Japanese premised their plan on achieving surprise, and therefore would have to make the 3,000 mile voyage on radio silence. On radio silence? Also, they were to disperse their forces in order to avoid detection and mask their intentions. That must be hard to keep them together. Yeah, in conjunction, there was another operation to the north to take over the Aleutian Islands which was codenamed Operation AL. Okay. Very creative. And so in the early hours of June 4th, all the forces were in position to attack a small, tiny atoll in the Central Pacific. The stage was set for one of the most epic engagements in naval history. This is the Battle of Midway. It is only a small bit of island, isn't it? The battle it? will be tiny. told from the Japanese perspective. The fog of war will be included during this video. That means you, the audience member, will only know the positions of the Americans the moment the Japanese commander knew of it. Oh, okay. okay. This is to Ooh. put the audience member... Yeah, I'll tell you what. This guy does these well. That's going to be so... Mm. Ex not exciting, but it's going to feel like you're going to see him like, oh, what are we going to do now? Yeah. Instead of, oh, if you do that, you're screwed because they're coming around. You're thinking in the moment, mm. aren't you? Yeah. I'm ready for this video. <laughs> Joey, I'm, I've been proper excited to do this video, haven't I? <laughs> I've been bagging on about it. Remember <laughs> in the commander's seat to see how they would have reacted themselves given the unique circumstances and complex scenarios that plagued the Japanese on the morning of June 4th. Mm -hmm. So to start off, let's see who the commander was and what his forces were. Spearheading the MI formations were four top-of-the-line fleet carriers of the first mobile striking force. 
also known as the Kido Butai. Okay. This was the most destructive offensive weapon the Japanese Navy had, and would be the main protagonist of the upcoming fight. Its commander is Vice Admiral Nagumo Chuishi. He was 55 and had assumed command of the first air fleet in April of 1941. Okay. He didn't get this post because he had naval aviation experience. In fact, he has specialized in torpedoes. Okay. He got the job simply based on seniority. It was said his command style lacked decisiveness and that he was too reliant on his that staff. That doesn't sound good. You Nevertheless, don't want that. in June of 1942, he was the most experienced carrier commander in the world. Nagumo had four carriers with him this day. His flagship was the Akagi. The Akagi was the oldest and longest of all the flat tops. She had a large aircraft capacity, and since she had been converted from a battlecruiser hull, possessed a high speed. Okay, so we can do quite a bit. The Kaga was a battleship conversion, so this made her the least maneuverable and the slowest of the four. But she did embark the most aircraft. While typical squadron strength was 18, she herself carried 27 carrier attack planes. That's a lot These of two planes. carriers were the star of war carriers too. Yeah. Tai. They packed a mean punch and were not to be messed around with. Next came the two dashing cavaliers of Carrier Division 2. They were the smaller, but more nimble Soryu class. They were designed from the kill up, had a good air group size, and a very high speed due to their light hulls and construction. Okay. Hmm. However, the downside was that they were lightly armored. The Soryu came first, being commissioned in 1937. She was well liked in the Navy. Her near sister ship, the Hiru, was almost identical, but had a larger bridge and was slightly better armored. Okay. You'd want to be on the bed all the time. Admiral Yamaguchi was a commander of Carrier Division 2, and he made the Hiro his flagship. He was another high ranking member of the fleet and was known to be an aggressive, hot tempered commander compared to Nagumo. Hmm. So, From the four carriers, Nagumo had a combined. But man, aren't they meant to be working together, them two groups? Yeah, they're not. Yeah, but then you've got one which is a bit indecisive, controlling two of them, and then the other two, aggressive. Is it not going to be a bit like, no, we need to go and play? I think we should stay. No, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. It, it also the leadership so far sounds a bit dodgy. <laughs> nah, definitely. You know, we did get a lot of comments on the Pearl Harbor one that you, we kind of got. A, it was back then, a long time ago, and no plan survived. Yeah. When you first contact, so I kind of do get that, but it just seems like it's contrasting. Mm. But maybe, maybe I mean, I don't know anything about war, so no, I don't. maybe we're completely wrong. Let us know in the comments, please. Strength of 248 aircraft. It's quite a lot. 260 yeah, total aircraft if one includes the scout planes from his escorting cruisers. What was equally important in the aircraft themselves was the quality of Nagumo's air crews. It wasn't a stretch to say that at this point in the war, the best naval pilots in the world were on board these four ships. Oh, wow. A lot of strength in depth. Yeah. Nagumo's mission was not going to be a walk in the park. He essentially had a dual mission. One, take out Midway. He needed to neutralize the base and its aircraft before the invasion convoy arrived two days later. And task number two was to keep a lookout for enemy carriers that might appear in the defense of the islands. Do you think they were prepared or not? Now this was unlikely as the Americans were not expected know. to react so quickly to the invasion. But as a safe measure, he was to keep half of his strike force armed with anti-shipping weapons in the event the Americans did show up early. Okay. okay. So we're assuming it has to be mentioned in Hawaii. Here, there yeah. were some ominous signs for the Japanese. As mentioned, the Japanese were counting on surprise for this bold operation to succeed. However, on the eve of battle, there were signs that this may not be going their way. Oh. Intelligence had revealed suspicious enemy activities around Midway, meaning the Americans were more alert than they should have been. Okay. Good for America. Yeah. And but... second, it must be emphasized that the Japanese, up to this point, have failed to confirm the location of the carriers. The Japanese mm. believed they would have to face against two, possibly three carriers to their four. So it was imperative that they get a confirmation of their whereabouts. Yeah. It was believed that they would still be in Pearl Harbor during the first days of the operation, and there were two attempts to verify this. The first was a reconnaissance mission to reconnoiter Pearl Harbor. However, this mission had been canceled. But there was still a fallback plan. Can you not like pick a line of submarines? The thing is, though, they managed. I know Pearl Harbor is going to be on like high alert, mm -hmm. but could you not just fly a plane? Is it so stupid of me to think they could just fly a really high plane, like as a surprise again, but just keep going and get out of there? You wouldn't think, yeah. Johnny? Yeah, but then I, I don't know. But is it because they they're now alert that they'll have watching the skies and they'll shoot it down? Do you think? 
Maybe. Or maybe they just weren't very prepared. <laughs> I don't know. Let us know in the comments, because that sounds like such a simple thing to me, but I get... I kind of get that if the air defences are then up because they're now expecting it. It's kind of it. like, well, they're going to... As soon as they yeah. get inside, they get There's shot no down. Because, yeah, they're going to die. But Go was down. technology that good? I don't know, then. Let us, please let us know in the comments, because that's an interesting maybe one. Maybe too. Maybe it wasn't that good. Yeah, maybe. ...mission had been cancelled. But there was still a fallback plan. A picket line of submarines ahead of Nagumo's force. Ooh, submarines. And so far, none of them had reported anything at all. Okay. This indicated to Nagumo that the American carriers were most likely still in port. The so as far the top as Nagumo was concerned, everything was going as planned. Four thirty a.m. I suppose for surprise, you've got to go for it, aren't you? Early dawn, June fourth. Compared to the scattered cloud cover to the northeast, the Kido Butai found itself under low but light cumulus clouds. The carriers continued to steam into the wind, which was coming from the southeast, to prepare for the air raid. Okay. At 0430, a strike of 108 aircraft was launched against Midway. All of these planes were launched in just 10 minutes. That's a a lot. testament to the skill and training of the Japanese pilots. Leading the strike was Lieutenant Tomonaga Joishi. He was a veteran of the air war over China, but this would be his first combat sortie against the Americans. Nagumo had to keep the other half of his planes in reserve in case American carriers appeared. The pilots in this group were the A-team. The best the Kido Butai had to offer. Okay. Oh wow. Akagi's torpedo squadron was said to be the best in the Navy. Just for the carrier. While yeah. Carrier Division 2 had the reputation of having the best dive bombers. Any report of an American carrier and these pilots would make easy work of them. Oh wow. And to think carriers are proper beasts. At the yeah, same time are. of the launch of the Midway Strike Group, reconnaissance planes were sent out from the escorting cruisers. The search consisted of seven lines, six of which stretched out to 300 miles. Surely they spotted with it. only seven planes to cover more than 176,000 square miles, the search effort can be considered half-hearted, perhaps yeah. even negligent. But are they not huge, these guys? in Nagumo's defense, it must be reminded that this was a precautionary air search. Simply put, Nagumo and his staff were convinced that no enemy carriers would appear this early into the battle. I've got a feeling they're gonna... I think so. <laughs> Although, I would say criticism is justified. I mean, given the fact that Intel reported suspicious activities around Midway, and given the bad weather in the area, Nagumo should have doubled his search efforts as a safety measure. It's what a prudent commander would have done. I was saying, you'd think you'd think it was a big bad, yeah. with bad weather, maybe not. Maybe not, yeah. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't see him. Anyway, the launch of the search planes went well, except that the launching of float plane number 4 from the cruiser Tone was delayed for 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Is that important? Like Is that going to one on track with the aircraft carrier or something? As the military proverb goes, no plan survives contact with the enemy, and today would be no exception. The operation officially began to unravel at 0532. Unravel. An American Catalina PBY was spotted surveying the Kido That's Busai. a whole hour after they came. Damn, Nagumo had been spotted. Meaning, surprise had been lost. This meant that the Americans would be able to get their land-based aircraft airborne before his strike arrived. Oh, before the 108 got there, wow. So we got up in the air yeah. to not be down. That's good for America, but... Yeah, big. As predicted, the Americans had been able to launch all of its planes before the strike arrived. Wow, The bombers awesome. went to attack the Japanese carriers, only the fighters stayed behind to defend the islands. These were 18 obsolete buffaloes and 6 wildcats. That's against 108. They intercepted the Japanese Thanks. at 0620, 30 miles from the base. They never stood a chance with the more agile zeros. Okay. In the ensuing battle, 13 buffaloes and 2 wildcats were lost. The carrier strike aircraft pushed through and began their bomb runs. Carrier Division 2 level bombers struck first at 0634. The dive bombers would come next at 0640. On Easter Island, the power plant, command posts, gasoline lines, and mess hall were destroyed. But no damage planes. to the runways yeah. was minor. On Sand Island, the oil tanks were set ablaze and the water lines were hit. A seaplane hangar and various base facilities were also destroyed. For their effort, American fighters and anti-aircraft fire destroyed 11 Japanese planes. 
another 14 would be rendered unserviceable when they landed back on their carriers. That's not too bad That's to be fair. That's a 23% loss. The damage to midway support facilities had been heavy, but the base wasn't out of the fight. Okay. The air group commander, Lieutenant Tomonaga, looked back at the condition of midway and with great dissatisfaction had to report back to Nagumo that a second strike was needed to neutralize the base. And if there's another 23% damage, it adds up, doesn't yeah. it? What follows next is a series of complicated events and situations happening to both the Kido Butai and on board Nagumo's headquarters. So I'll tackle them separately, starting with the oh, initial the strikes against in. the Kido Butai. At 0710, six TBF Avengers and four Army B-26s were spotted approaching the Japanese carriers. This would be the first of four separate attacks from Midway base aircraft that would harass them throughout the early morning. Over 30 fighters were sent to destroy the 10 American warplanes. The Avengers selected the Hiru. Zero swarmed over them and one by one the torpedo bombers were shot down. Only two were able to launch at the Hiru but from extreme range and they missed. Oh wow. wow. The so 4 B-26s yeah. which had been modified to carry torpedoes went for the Akagi. Only two were able to launch but they both missed. It's not good. The real danger was posed by the last B-26. The damaged bomber made no attempt to pull out of its attack. Instead, it headed directly for Akagi's bridge. Nagumo and his staff saw this and were shocked. The Americans were not supposed to show this kind of bravery. The bomber pressed on and at last minute, Ooh. narrowly missed the bridge and crashed into the sea. Oh. His suicide attack had failed, but surely it had given Nagumo and his staff one hell of a scare. Mm. But then that's like, because again, Despite I think the Japanese are meant more known yeah. for kamikaze, aren't they? An American does it and miss it. it, it it's good, isn't it? It is. It's it's, good. Yeah, it is. When he potentially could have got away. But unfortunately, war, isn't it? War is sad at times, isn't it? It is, but I don't know if a scale was good enough. I know, I know. Despite the bravery and determination, the attack had failed to achieve a single hit. Five Avengers and, all them and losses. two Marauders have been shot down. The Japanese lost two zeros. That's not good. Half an hour later, at 0753, a new force was spotted approaching the mobile force. 16 Marine Corps Dauntless Dive Bombers. Nine Zeros set out to destroy them. The dive bombers pressed on and went for the Hiru. Instead of going for a steep dive ensuring accuracy, these planes conducted a glide bombing attack. Okay. They were clearly inexperienced pilots if this was their way of attacking. A lot of misses. They managed good. to bracket the Hiru with some near misses, but ultimately no hits were scored. They lost half of their squadron, leaving only eight survivors to return to Midway. Not a single the Japanese bit of lost damage. Only one zero. Wow. Just three zeros. And shortly after that attack, 15 Army B 17s attacked from 20,000 feet. At this altitude, the B 17s were immune to the anti aircraft fire below them. Okay. However, this also greatly diminished their accuracy. They went after the Soru, Hiru, and Akagi, but the carriers below them had more than enough time to conduct evasive maneuvers and avoid the bombs. There were no losses on either sides and no hits were scored. Only near misses on the Soru and Hiru caused any alarm. A remarkable set of photographs were taken at this moment. Wow. Here's the Hiru dodging a couple of very near misses. That was very close, that one, wasn't it? the three fighters of Combat Air Patrol on their flight deck. Here, we got the Akagi, Nagumo's flagship, while under attack. Wow. Easily noticeable is the red rising sun painted on the deck. Wow. And the third picture shows the Soru. She's conducting a tight turn to starboard to avoid being hit. It's mad how we've got the photos yeah, yeah, in it. It's crazy Carrier it. doctrine and flight deck operations need to be commented on here. During attacks, the main priority was obviously the defense of the carriers. This came in three forms anti-aircraft fire, combat air patrol, and evasive maneuvers. Yeah. Japanese anti-aircraft fire capabilities were very weak, so could not be counted on. So this let fighter cover and evasive maneuvers as the main forms of defense for Nagumo's force. Evasive maneuvers. There yeah. was a downside though. One, due to the evasive maneuvers that require wild and violent turns, 
it was obviously dangerous to spot or launch a squadron of aircraft while being bombed. Yeah. So let's say you wanted to launch an airstrike, but then you found yourself under attack. It would actually be better to wait until the attack was over to then fly off for strike. Okay. Hmm. And second point, as these pictures show, Japanese flight decks had to be kept clear anyways during air attacks for the replenishment of their own fighters. And this was rather frequent since the Zero had about 7 seconds of cannon ammunition. Fighters were given priority because they did after all provide the most effective measure of defense. Hence, the only activity you would see during attacks was the recovery, replenishment, and relaunching of these small packets of fighters. Okay. Three at a time, sometimes six at a time. Wow. In other words, and the point I'm trying to drive in here was that, as a general rule, you couldn't launch a strike while under attack. Yeah. So let's just say hypothetically that at this moment Naguma wanted to send a strike, it was prudent to just wait until the attack was over, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then launch his aircraft. I suppose, although it's funny because, sorry, I'm thinking of multiple things in my head. Mm-hmm. On the attack of Pearl Harbor, we thought the hit percentages were super yeah. low. A lot of people from the comments said back then it was actually quite a good hit yeah. percentage. It's kind of explaining that now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit more easy to understand. A lot will be missed. But then I, I guess because they keep sending strike after strike, although it's like, okay, we'll, we'll mm. send an airstrike in 20 minutes, it's another 20 minutes, another 20 minutes. Yeah. So that's delaying them so the carriers can get closer, I guess, more time. I guess so. It kind of makes sense. I, 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 I guess it. that's the way. But the only problem is the losses, isn't it? It's a shame. It's... Zero hits and quite a few losses. Yeah, especially when the other team aren't really like losing either. I imagine it's a bit chaotic for them moving. Maybe it disrupts yeah. the battle plan a little bit, but but just, not in terms of like actually losing. They're not losing. It's only a few zeros yeah. they've lost compared to a lot of actual yeah. aircraft and bombers um, Americans have lost. So maybe these attacks aren't being accurate or deadly, but they are hindering flight operations. Oh, there we go. Keep yeah. this in mind, as you will see the fateful consequences of it. Okay. Midway's final attack came at 0827. Eleven old Marine Corps Vindicator dive bombers arrived from the southeast. These were obsolete bombers and they wisely decided not to go for the formidably defended carriers. Instead, they selected the battleship Haruna as their target. There were 11 fighters on combat air patrol to oppose them. The Americans persisted and made their dives on the Haruna, but once again, none of them scored a hit. Two Vindicators were lost during the attack. And more losses. And... In the midst of all of this, a submarine had been spotted, and at 0825, it fired a torpedo at the battleship Kirishima. Okay. The battleship dodged it by turning to port, and the destroyer Rashi was detached and sent in pursuit to chase down the submarine. Americans are getting more As you can see, yeah. this had all been a narrow escape for the Japanese. These series of close calls surely had everyone on the edge of their seats. I think, wouldn't you? You'd be Although tense. the Japanese were impressed by the determination of the attacks, they were not impressed by the skills of these pilots. Despite 52 planes being dedicated to the attack, not a single hit was achieved on the Japanese. The biggest success these attacks had was that it had kept the Japanese off balance from 0700 to 0830. Okay, now which, as yeah. we will see, was a critical time for Nagumo. Well, we do have an ad. I think we've got a little bit longer to go to get to the 20 minute mark. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what we're exactly on, but we'll leave it here because we've got an ad. We may yeah, as well we'll leave it here. Well. The next part can be a little bit longer. Let us know in the comments if you enjoyed that. Um, I, I feel like the aircraft carriers are going to come into mm-hmm. play because of that delay. I may be completely wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you guys say in the comments because we would have already recorded this by the time you see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so let us know in the comments below. But in 24 hours' time, tomorrow, Part two will be out. So if you if you're watching this after part two's out, which is in twelve hours, it will be top. I'll update the description yeah. with part two. So just go to the description, click the link, and enjoy. Yeah. Hopefully, people enjoyed the live stream earlier. Like I say, if you can check out Patreon, that is in the description. Would really appreciate it. If not, just smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and that is enough, isn't it? It is. What's your video? Have a fantastic day. Looking forward to part two. Yes. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.